exhibition. Could you uh, tell us a little about it? Yeah, of course, uh, we're trying to make an exhibition work in this year, which is uh, 400 years relations between the Netherlands and Japan. So this museum has a long a relationship with uh, Japan as well, because this room where we're now standing, the 17th century drawing room, has been uh, replicated, uh, copied for Japan, the Dutch village in Japan. So this room is also there. So because of this connection between Japan and Netherlands, we thought we could also do an exhibition in this building about Japan, and we've decided to do something about uh, uh, Zen Buddhism, so uh, religious art, which has to do with Japan, because this museum is also about religious art. So there we have a connection between this house and Japan. And that's what we've done. We've made an exhibition uh, from uh, objects which come from a private collection, which is a very beautiful collection, and we have chosen a lot of beautiful objects which fit into the building and show a little bit about Zen Buddhism in, uh, in Japan and also have a little bit of atmosphere in this typical 17th century house in Amsterdam. Now, when you say objects that are related to Zen Buddhism, uh, maybe some of our viewers don't exactly know uh, what objects might be related to Zen Buddhism. Could you tell us a little about some of the objects, why they're interesting? Uh, it's very difficult to tell a lot about uh, Zen Buddhism because I don't know really that much about it because it's very difficult. You have uh, two religions in Japan. Of course, you, one time you have Buddhism and the other one is the, 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 the state religion, uh, which is, uh, what's the name, the, uh, the Shinto religion. So that's also difficult to distinguish those two. Um, there are a lot of uh, Buddhist temples and it's a certain way of dealing with art and the people who own this collection are very much interested in everything that has to do with Japanese art and they have this special liking for Zen Buddhism, They're the way of treating religion and dealing with religion in another way than we are used to in the Christian religion. And objects we have have all to do with the uh, Zen Buddhist part, but I'm not that well trained to tell you all the details about why this is what or why is that. We have chosen the objects to fit into the building and to have them blend with the building and to make them as beautiful as possible. But they all have a religious uh, symbolism in it like how to deal with nature. Nature is of course very important that you treat nature very uh, respectfully and people are very serene and in in, in complete harmony with, uh, with nature. And I think the objects which are now in the museum, they display the relation between nature, people, and the world. And Zen Buddhism um, came to Japan rather late in the uh, Buddhist tradition. Uh, is it a major force of art in Japan? No, it's not a major force of art. So it's, it's, you have to find really, really very good to find objects we are related to Zen Buddhism because it's, it's not the most important religion there. It's just you really have to find objects which are related with it. So we have found objects, but they can date from the 15th century, like this beautiful uh, piece of sculpture here. But can, most of the objects are, of course, 19th century or even beginning of the 20th century. And in Japanese tradition, you also know that the Japanese are used to copying. They think that even if you make a copy of an original, this copy is just as important as the original. Like we think that something is original, everything you copy is just less value, less important, but they can uh, um, uh, destroy, uh, destroy a, uh, a temple from the 15th century and we built it in exactly the same materials in the year 2000 and they still think that the building is just as valuable and important as the one they just destroyed. So that's something we are not used to, but which is very normal in Japanese art. So some of the objects uh, are copies from all the objects, but still are important works of art in the viewing of the idea of a Japanese. Like, for example, when they copied this room, uh, it's of course a 17th century room, and they really copied it with every detail. So for them, it's just as important as the room they just copied. And we think, oh, it's just a copy. Well, what exactly is the Dutch village in Japan? Maybe you could tell us a little about that. Uh, it's a project we started about 20, 25 years ago. Um, they wanted to have, because of the relations between the Netherlands and Japan, they wanted to have a, a kind of a theme park. Uh, it's just like uh, a Disney park, Disney World. They wanted uh, some place where people would go to and enjoy themselves. And that could, of course, be just 
going to the merry-go-round, but you can also go and see something about the culture of another nation. So because of the relationship between the Netherlands and Japan, they decided to build a Dutch village near Nagasaki. And Nagasaki, of course, was the spot where the Dutch traded from, from Deshima. So um, they built a very small village there with a, a boat and with a, um, uh, some typical Dutch farmhouses and of course with um, 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 windmill and these kind of things. So it became very, very popular. And then uh, about 10, 15 years ago, they decided to build a whole city, a Dutch city. And they asked uh, urbanists and everything and, and scientists to build a real Dutch town, starting from a medieval center with uh, Renaissance and, and Baroque additions and 19th century uh, quarters around it. So it became a big space. And they're also very interested in how the Dutch uh, were always struggling with, uh, with water. Fifteen years ago, they started thinking about creating a whole new Dutch town because the other one was so successful. So they asked all kinds of urbanists and ecologists to work out a plan to build a real Dutch city there as at a theme park, but also where people could actually live in. So they invested uh, billions of guilders to rebuild a, a whole Dutch town, starting from the medieval period, the center near the water, and then 17th century canals and 18th century additions and 19th century quarters, just like any normal Dutch city in, let's say, really in, in Holland would have been looking like, like Leiden or Delft. So in a few, couple of years they just built a whole Dutch town there. And it's very amazing, it's very beautiful. And they've copied all these important buildings from the Netherlands, like uh, the City Hall of Gouda and the Tower of the Dom in Utrecht. And they also built uh, Paleis Huis ten Bosch, the royal palace where the Queen lives. And that also is giving that palace gives the name to the whole project. So the Japanese call this Dutch village now Huis ten Bosch. And also <laughs> inside of this palace, they recreated all kind of Dutch interiors. And a 17th century, an 18th century, a 19th century interior. And for the 17th century interior, they chose this room as being the most important 17th century room in the Netherlands. And there must come about four or five million people every year there to see a typical Dutch town, but also just to enjoy themselves and just buy a typical European project or eat cheese or eat herring and also make exhibitions about Dutch art there in the Royal Palace. And there are also lots of big hotels. They copied the uh, Hotel de l'Europe, but it's four times bigger than the one we have in Amsterdam. So it's quite amazing and it's also typically un-Dutch because when you go there, I was there at the opening a couple of years ago, it, it, it does look like it's the Netherlands, but the other side, other way, there are already so many things with a typical Japanese, so you think, where am I? It's, it's very, very strange. It's typical Japanese taste, uh, how the Japanese look at ideal Europe. It's much too clean to be Dutch, so it's, everything is so clean and it's so funny. Uh, but it has to be... Um, uh, earthquake proof, so all the buildings are very steady, nothing is, is leaning, it's all too, too systematically and too beautiful to be Dutch. But it's an amazing city to walk around in and it's, uh, it's quite a success. Now we know that the Japanese viewed all of the Dutchmen as pointed-nosed, red-haired people. Are there, a, do they have a bunch of them living there? Yeah, they, have, they always import Dutchmen for, for a couple of months to, to be like uh, extras in the scenery. So they have also people who are wearing typical Dutch costumes and doing uh, klompen dansen and uh, they do, they uh, recreate the spectacle of, uh, of the cheese market in, uh, in Alkmaar. So they have these Dutch guys walking around with uh, cheeses and everything. So there are always people also with, with dry orgels and typical Dutch things and they have Dutchmen too as, 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 as a part of the scenery and there you see the typical Japanese walking around them so it's it's quite strange look at it but it's, it's, it, it works it's quite a success and I think they did it then but I think they still do it every 
uh, day they recreate the uh, opening of parliament with the queen in a golden carriage uh, riding around the town. Of course they don't have a golden carriage but they have horses and they have carriages so they also have these kind of spectacles uh, taking place every day so people are animated by, by everything they see. So they try to recreate a Dutch town in the way the Japanese want to see it. So it's typical with tulips and windmills and water and uh, all the things we think are sometimes a little bit stupid, but anyway, that's the world's opinion about the Dutch, so it's, it's nothing wrong with that in a way. Hoofs, could you tell us uh, how long will this exhibition on Zen art be here at the Amstelkring? It will be here for another six weeks until the uh, 20th of August, and it's in several rooms of the museum. We have some objects in this room, but we also have objects in the basement of the museum and in some of the other spaces of the museum. So. It's a nice thing uh, to uh, have a look at in the summer months. Now, your museum is a little bit obscure to uh, get to in uh, kind of a racy neighborhood for a Catholic yes, church. Yes. Could you tell people how to get here? So it's very close to the city center. It's, uh, it's very close to Central Station, Dam Square. So if you just uh, turn um, near the Beurs van Berlage to the left into the red light, district and you walk to the outer side Voorburg wall, it's on the left. So it's, it's just a five minutes walk from Dam Square or from the central station. But you have to look for it. Thank you very much for being with us today. You're welcome. Thank you.